Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Oslescu, owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. And today we are going to be talking about the AMT Ertl 1972 Chevy Chevelle SS454. This model kit would make a great little addition to somebody that has a lot of model cars and is looking for a filler model car to fill the space between 1970 and 1972 for Chevrolet Chevelles. So we're going to go and take a look at this model kit in a moment, but if you want to see our current model kits that are available, check out our website at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And now without further ado, let's check out our 1972 Chevelle SS454. And now we wind the clock all the way back to 1972 as we go down to our Chevy showroom and see this amazing 72 Chevy Chevelle SS. Now this was becoming the last years of muscle cars. In fact, 72 was pretty much GM's last year of building muscle cars before the big body changes and everything else. And as we can see, this model has some uh, custom features on here with these old style mag wheels. Okay, this is an RC2 kit, of course. So from a little while ago, as you can see, there's a few pictures of the interior engine and side profile of the car, as well as the three quarters that we saw in the front of the box. Side of the box mirrors that. This is a skill level two kit for ages 10 and up, requires glue and a paintbrush. And it came out in 2003 from RC2 Brands. So that's quite a while ago. All right, let's flip this around here and get the low down as we rip the lid off this box. Don't worry, I'm not going to throw it across the room. <laughs> oh, hey, I've got some old notes on here. Bought at Walmart in a three-pack on December 30th, 2003 for $14.95. There's three cars in there as well as the paints. So... Uh, take $14.95 and divide it by four, and that's how much I paid for this thing. So again, we got these 70s style instruction sheets for a 72 Chevy Chevelle SS 454. I always like how the instruction sheets say more than what's on the box top. <laughs> there we got our glass there. You, you know this is a 70s kit when you got the runners going in on the windows. There's our undercarriage. Our body with the nice little cardboard stuck in here so the roof doesn't get collapsed, which is a good thing that uh, RC2 did. There we've got our interior tub and our seats and roll pan. Now I do believe this was in a bag and I took it out of the bag a long time ago. <laughs> Look at the little differential. <laughs> so narrow. And the wheel backs are massive. Anyway, there's uh, some custom bits. Engine. My big 454. There. We also have this air cleaner thing here that's uh, custom stuff going on. Lots of air cleaners. Big one. Ram Air Hood style. Uh, intake fuel injection, I guess. And then this little dinky one here. Okay, groovy. There's our groovy hood. Uh, groovy, groovy. Smother me with groovy. Dashboard. Man, everything is just like little bits in here. Uh, rear seat. There's our chrome. The grill's popped out of there. Oh, our decal sheet. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Not even got the black stripes on the hood. I mean, I don't know what was with round two back then. And there's our, our uh, tires. That's everything in the box, folks. So I'll just move this out of the way and we'll take a look at those instructions. Here's our instruction sheet for a 1972 Chevy Chevelle SS454. Now these are typical 70s style instructions as well. This is when they start to get larger. As you can see, this is not gonna fit in the frame very well. So what I'll do is zoom in on each of the individual sections as we continue. Here we are with our engine assembly, and can you dig this? There's actually three engines you can build out of this thing. <laughs> so, this is really interesting. 
All right, we have our engine block going together for this 454. Left and right hand side block with transmission off the back. Very typical of the era. Separate oil pan, which is always nice. And right and left hand side cylinder heads. There's our starter motor mounting over on this side. And then we have our valve covers. These got the starburst style numbering. Okay, anyway, there's our exhaust manifolds, our intake manifold, and our air cleaner. Of course, our distributor and the heater hose. Okay, so here's our optional engine. This would be a big drag racing machine thing because we have a blower top and bottom and then the three sides here. Actually, that's an air scoop. Pardon me. There's our blower with the three things as well as our special manifold and then finned valve covers and these big noodle exhaust headers as well as the more advanced distributor going on here. And then like we saw on the parts tree, there was also that induction fuel injection type top. Now in this, we have our stock motor. We have the front cover, our alternator, and our belts and our fan. And then over on our drag racing one, of course, we have the big belts and pulleys for our blower the front chromed cover for our engine and then this little guy went in there so pretty cool you get all these different options in this next up we have our wheels going on here there's some pretty cool uh, beehive style honeycomb style wheels for our custom which we'll see on our parts tree anyway there's our stock wheels going up in through our tires the front is basically the same as the back i can't really see too much difference but anyway, that's uh, how they look. Moving into panel five, the chassis on here is simple, actually. Front suspension is just molded right in there. And then it's almost kind of like monogram style in a way, but I don't know, somehow AMT kind of missed the mark, in my opinion, on these undercarriages uh, as opposed to the monogram ones. But anyway, there's our rear differential going together the exhaust manifolds and then these are of course little tailpipe extensions I think maybe why these aren't quite as nice is maybe they were done earlier and the monogram ones are you know the model cars were made more in the 80s so it's a little crisper more attention to detail on those undercarriages on the monograms but still basically quite simple you got your coil springs going underneath and then shock absorbers so that makes up our entire undercarriage for this model and now we've got to attach our wheels now unfortunately this is not my most favorite this is almost again like the MPC 1967 Pontiac GTO kits they give you these plastic squares I guess with holes in them and then you take this plastic front axle peg and you push it through the back and you try to put a little bit of glue on here so you glue your wheel on and of course as you try to push your wheel on this slips back a little bit gets glue right in here and then your front wheel sees up always a problem however there's ways around it but you got to be really careful if these are metal pins that would be great but nine times out of ten they're plastic but we'll find out on the parts tree as we go along again it, there's the big watch out exclamation point <laughs> so you know that's the danger zone. <laughs> anyway, there's a metal axle going through the back end here. And then we've got our radiator support with the radiator included and the battery gluing in place. And then it all pops in underneath there. Panel 7 shows our interior going in place. It's basically a stock 72 Chevy interior. You get your seat in the back, your bucket seats with the console molded as one piece, and the two inserts, and then your shifter steering wheel and dashboard all going into this interior tub here's the back end of the instruction sheet and i was going to do this all individually but then i kind of realized that i could get it all in one frame it's very basic so here we have our body the windshield glass popping in place and the mirror going up inside our assembled interior bucket and then the firewall glues in and that all pops in and then we glue our rear bumper on, we paint our taillights inside here, and put our splash pan underneath. You can put this drag chute in here for your big blower machine. So unfortunately, it never gave you a racing interior. There's our hood popping in place, and our front grille, 
as well as our single headlights. Now, I think at, in this stage of the game, GM was moving away from the dual headlights from the earlier Chevelles. Anyway, here we have our nice panels for where our decals, or actually our paint would go. Um, yeah, <laughs> and then at the front and at the back, and our license plates going in. Our one and only decals, the license plates, going on. Now down below is a little paint chart, but there's only four colors. Red, amber, silver, and black. So I guess the interior is supposed to be painted red, because they've got an A going right to that seat. And on the steering wheel, maybe the body is black. There's amber for all your turn signal lamps. D is black, pointing up inside the wheel openings. C for silver on your emblems. But yeah, overall that's about it. And that completes our look at our 1972 Chevelle SS454 instructions. And now let's take a look at our groovy plastic components. Here we have our 1972 Chevelle SS454 body. And as you can see, there's a giant brace here that we need to remove. There's some little prongs at the front here. That is actually how the car is supposed to go. So don't cut those off, whatever you do. <laughs> our vent is covered by our hood in this era. Although there's no actual vent detail in here, which it should have the sunken uh, windshield wipers and vents there and there. However, what can you do? Along the side, doesn't look too bad for what it's supposed to be representing. Your door lock handle, your SS script here. There's a little bit of chrome molding along the wheel wells and the bottom. Um, maybe not the best mold AMT's ever done, but still, I mean, since this is the only 72 Chevelle on the market, this is basically what we have to deal with. Uh, there are some sun visors kind of molded in here on the roof. I don't know if you'd call that molded, they're just indented. <laughs> A little texture there, and then it's all slick in the back. A bunch of mold marks underneath need to be cleared up. Um, oh, there's a peg there. The interior goes on, as you'll see later. Uh, again, I guess it's okay. Next up, we have our interior tub. And since this is all done as a one piece, you don't really get too many extra features or details, I should say. Like if these side panels were done separately, you would get the nice window cranks in there. However, what you get is sort of just... A basic blob. <laughs> sort of a, a representation of what it's supposed to be. You can see one in the back here, barely. Um, the pedals are molded on the floor. They are so tiny you wouldn't even know they were there. Uh, the mold marks in the carpet area. There's a nice texture on there actually, all things considered. Underneath the little stamp says licensed by GM Core. That's pretty interesting. Uh, pretty slick underneath, not too much to be said about this piece, other than it'll fit all your seats inside. Next up we have our chassis. There is the AMT Ertl logo stamped right in the gas tank area on the inside. A lot of mold marks underneath here. There's our fender wells with the wires in them. Uh, yeah, a lot of mold marks. Some will need to be filled, some will need to be cleared down. If we flip this over, you can see a bit of flash here on these little hooks. That, of course, is for our metal axle to go through. You need to drill these out because they're flashed over. Um, nice detail underneath there for the pan and everything. Uh, front is a little bit um, <laughs> non-existent. However, uh, big holes for our springs to mount into and our exhaust system. The drive shaft is molded in place, so it would be interesting to try to paint that up. This you're going to have to remove with your saw. Or clippers. I think clippers would pinch. But yeah, overall, I don't know. It'll do the job. Here we have all the grey plastic parts components for our model kit. And as you can see, there's quite a bit. But 
again, the quality of them is sort of not the greatest. Remember in my intro video on this channel where I said, has this happened to you? Oh, honey, I got this great model kit. And, and then you get to your bench. <laughs> this is one of those negative experiences. And when I got to the bench, it was like, oh boy. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so here's everything we've got. We've got our seats here. Actually, these kind of remind me of like the 64 Chevy Impala. Uh, same kind of construction methods. So there's our seats, seat backs, exhaust manifolds, the hood, the radiator hose. There's our headers, our wheel retainers, I believe. I'm not sure where, where these would come into play. Anyway, there's our wheel backs and the axle bits. Oh yeah, they are plastic, so when you push them through, be careful to, when you're gluing the wheels on, be really careful there that you don't glue them right into those. There's our dashboard. Here's our big 454 engine. The support with the radiator. Um, there's all our air cleaner parts, as I showed before, engine bits. Firewall, uh, rear axle, steering wheel, Oh, looks like those again, maybe in a different position for uh, stock and lowering or something to that effect. Anyway, there's all the components. Let's just move these to the side and then I'll push them up into the camera here one by one so we can see what we're looking at. It's kind of a bummer, man. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's start here. So there's our firewall. There's some good detail on it, considering this is all just uh, one piece. There's a couple mold marks off the back. I think this is a round two first, everybody. A steering wheel that's not cut off, stuck in a plastic bag, and it's taped right in the interior tub. That's a first for RC2. <laughs> anyway, there's our blocks. Yeah, they are central on this one, so uh, that might be for stock. Our little drag chute that sits right where the license plate is. There's a little teeny narrow differential with these uh, traction bars and a little bit of the drive shaft. And then the other part of our differential here with, of course, our exhaust manifolds. Or, sorry, our exhaust pipes and our mufflers going in there. Again, very simplistic. Lots of flash, as you can see. Um, looking at the bucket seats, this is where the detail is actually quite good in this kit. It's on these bucket seats. Got your center console there. There's that rear pan. Quite a lot of stuff going in. It's almost like a screw-mounted model kit off the bottom there. There's our back seat. Again, nice detail in there. I'm gonna paint these uh, semi-gloss black or something. And then our hood and exhaust manifolds. Uh, not too bad. Big mold marks in there. Got to be chopped down. There's our little dashboard. Nice uh, instrument cluster on there. As well as the vents for the air conditioning. And our little narrow glove box. And our wheel backs, again, lots of flash mold marks right where you don't need them. So remove those with your hobby blades, the exhaust manifolds. There's our engine block, little tiny coil springs, be careful not to lose those. Radiator with support. Transmission. Transmission isn't too bad on there. Anyway, watch for mold marks. And then we get our engine bits. I do believe, pardon me, I do believe this is actually the most recent addition to this kit. Inter uh, that's why they don't show it in the instructions there. Um, valve covers. Again, the proper 454 valve covers on here. Intake manifold is quite nice, actually. <laughs> that little air cleaner is comical. Uh, stuff for the ram air hood. I do believe you want to use this one for the stock. I think this one's from like a six cylinder or something weird. 
I don't know, anybody ever build this kit and it had the straight six in it? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. There's the injector uh, crossover bits there. And the plenum for the front of this thing hooks up onto the radiator wall. On top of your radiator. Just to get some more air into the fuel injection. Anyway, uh, somebody will probably tell me that's not how fuel injection works, but... I don't know. I'm a little bit bummed out with this kit, so I'm not going to be too too exact on what's going on, like maybe in some other kits. I might kit reviews. I might be. There's our seats and our there. So that's all our gray plastic parts. Next up, we get our chrome components. My favorite part of any model kit because it just brightens it all up. But by this time in 72, there's not too much chrome going on to cars. We have our rear SS bumper with the special 72 uh, dual taillights going in here, sort of matching the Corvette. The new for 71 grill going in here, of course, on our 72. We've got these nice stock wheels here, and then those honeycomb mag style wheels. Then we've got our 671 blower with all the components for it including this air cleaner air cleaner again is very much like the one found in the 67 mpc gto i wonder if this isn't an mpc kit originally have to look it up uh, valve covers there's our big belt for our blower not sure what these two guys are uh, more blower components there's our alternator our mirrors and our exhaust tip and the shift lever now, it's just, the uh, bumper was loose in the packaging, and you can tell where it was. This is why you never twist your parts off, because these are now kind of wrecked. <laughs> but, I don't know, I'll have to figure it out. The chrome on this is nice. Really nice. It's got the actual uh, bumper bolts molded in here for our brackets that would be in behind. This is the year just before impact bumpers uh, that would be 73, and the body style changes for 73. Mold marks down in here. This, of course, painted all flat black inside. Make it disappear from underneath your car. Okay, looking at this again, we actually have... I don't think we have the um, regular Chevy wheels. Oh yeah, wait a minute, what am I thinking of? 72, they introduced these kind of uh, Krager-style five-spoke mags onto the Chevelle. There's our rear bumper. I don't know if this actually... Are those the correct wheels? I don't know. There's our honeycomb wheels. And then the blower... Or the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, the scoop for our blower. Our blower down here. Those things that I'm not sure what they are. It's, they look like air cleaner covers. They also look like big backup lights. <laughs> I don't know, anyway. Uh, there's all the rest of the bits. Chrome again, some mold marks in behind here. Paint the rear bumper flat black inside. Yeah, that's basically it. There's not too much to this chrome at all. Next up we have our clear components. These are, of course, in a bag, which was nice, so they don't get all scratched up and look terrible on your model kit. We have our headlights, our front windshield, rear window, and again, typical 70s style. The uh, runner's going across here. This is even could be late 60s. Oh, there's a little uh, marker lights down here I missed. Uh, and then these little lights up top and our tail lights. So let's just take a look at these. So again, we got that waffle pattern on those headlights. Make sure you're going north and south, not at a 45 degree angle. Little lights up top there and chevron front turn signal covers which are pretty nice again mold marks and numbers you can cut the runners off there there and there and there and glue the in these separately into your windshield and rear window frames and we got our tail lights you can see the nice little uh, circular reflector detail in them these are pretty nice actually they'll look good on your rear bumper Oh, remember, now, if you're going to paint the back of the bumper uh, flat black, before you do that, 
clear off the mold marks off here, <laughs> then paint this silver, and then paint it flat black over the top. Because then you get a nice reflector kind of thing going on in here. If you paint it flat black, of course all that black will transfer through and your tail lights will really darken. So make sure you do that first. Anyway, overall I think the glass in this is quite nice. So there you go. Normally in my reviews I do the decal sheet as its own separate thing, but there's really nothing to this decal sheet. Just two license plates from Utah from 1972. NB8732, and that's it. So unfortunately you don't get the nice black stripes for the hood like this car is supposed to have, or any of that. However, the tires here are the really excellent Goodyear Polyglass GTs. These were bias belted tires back in the day, just before the radials really took over. You can see the nice tread detail. These are excellent tires. Actually, they're quite nice. Usually there's a spider web in here, but AMT has removed it, and they did a really good job of removing it perfectly, which is hard to do when you're using your hobby knife, especially how chunky that uh, inner web is. But again, very nice. And there's your metal rear axle. So that basically completes our tires and decal sheet. All is one nice package. And that completes our review of our 1972 Chevrolet Chevelle SS 454 model. Now this kit may not be the best one I've reviewed on this channel. If you've built it, let us know in the comment section down below. How did you find the fit and finish? I know I might get some uh, brutal reviews from you guys out there. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll get some really good ones, but I don't know. To me, this seems sort of like it was the last hurrah for this mold of this, and perhaps it could have been done better. Um, sort of too bad that uh, Monogram didn't do a 72 version of this. But anyway, like I said before, let us know in the comments down below how you enjoyed it. And if you have built this, please share it with us on our Facebook page. Well, I hope you enjoyed our look at the AMT Ertl 1972 Chevrolet Chevelle SS 454 model car kit. And if you want to check out our current model cars that are available right now on our website, visit us at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And if you love these amazing videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first one to see it. And if you have built this model, share it on our Facebook page. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.